internet. We're famous. We're e famous. No, we're not. No. All right. So we're going to start tonight. We're going to start the new chapter in our D&D campaign. Uh, we did a session zero last week. Kyle, you weren't really here for it. So we're going to go over basically what's going to, what's the story, the story so far. So the game starts in the Patrian city of Torre, which is basically on the other side of the mountains from where you guys were. So let me, I was going to upgrade, update this map. So you see where Somerset is in the northern end of yeah. Lords, And there's that mountain pass that goes north. <clears throat> Torre is several days north of Somerset through the mountain pass. Uh, and it is outside the darkness. Everybody here is has been hired, extorted, or bullied by a professor of the Arcane University named Jasper Manderbolt. Uh, he has given you a mission. That mission is to go back, go to the capital city of Somerset, find the secret library, extract a book, and bring it back to him. Uh, so that's the basic premise of the game. And the book he's go asking for is this one. Glazandruel, Gl the Book of Secrets. A dangerous arcane tome thought to have belonged to St. Vecna. It is said that between its scarred red leather covers is recorded every secret in the world. It is also said that most who open the book lack the willpower to close it again, and that many have wasted away and died while reading it. It was mm. donated to the secret library of Somerset 200 years ago and was promptly placed in the restricted section. Uh, so that you had said that we kind of get to name our own price to go into the darkness? That's right. Uh, Bledna wants to be able to read that book. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Manderbolt's kind of like taken aback. By the request, like visibly, he like he see like, his eyebrows kind of raise and then quickly lower again. He says, "Fine, but two things: one, be careful, and two, when the time comes, you have to give it to me." Oh, laddie, don't you be worrying. <laughs> I just take a quick peek, just a little bit of a a little eye nibble, and I'll be giving it right back to you. A little, a little eye nibble. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh Kyle, you missed the session zero. So Bledna and Sarith are the only two known people known to have ever left the darkness. Uh it's been it's this takes place a year after uh the previous game. So it's been a hot minute since uh, Calixtus uh, tried to end the world. Allegedly. You, you and... Uh, <laughs> there's no allegedly about it, friend. You and you and uh, Serith basically bailed from Blackburn with as many survivors as you could find and headed south. You just basically headed east and eventually, uh, most of the, the the people you brought with you, most of them are dead. Uh, a couple of them are crazy now. Uh, but to your so shock and surprise, one day you you hit the 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 dark the membrane of darkness and walk through it and uh, hit daylight, pure unadulterated sunlight, which shocked the hell out of you. Uh, you subsequently learned that the, the darkness specifically envelops the Duchy of Lords. Specifically. Like the like if you look on a map, the border perfectly like the the darkness perfectly encapsulates it. So it is definitely an isolated area. 
Uh, you were collected by soldiers. You were asked a lot of questions and shuffled around the Kingdom of Patria for a little while until eventually you end up in the care of Professor Manderbolt in the city of Torre, who made you the deal. Because And he wants you and Sarah on the team because obviously you have experience. Uh, do, we, do we know where the book is supposed to be? Right, that he told us. Yeah, it's in the. Isn't it spo- supposedly? Isn't it in the the main branch of the uh, library? The library in the capital city. In Somerset. The, oh wait, the hidden library. Yeah, the secret library in the. In, so of in, course he wants Bledna because she's a librarian. That's another reason why Bledna is a librarian. Why don't you lads be worrying too much? Why don't you just get me to that Dewey Dewey and Dungeon Decimal System? I'll I'll be finding it right quick. <laughs> Now, so the plan is that so uh, Manderbolt has made everybody a pendant. And these pendants, he's done a lot of research and they are creations of his own devising. They should protect you from the ravages of the darkness for a short period of time. He can't say exactly how long, but he knows it's not long enough to get to Somerset dig around in the library and back to Somerset. So the plan is he's hired Captain Nikolai Castera, uh, played by Casey, to take you by the road less traveled. He has found a local gateway to the Feywild. He suggests that you take that road through the Feywild to a, a gate near Somerset, because he theorizes that the darkness has not penetrated dimensional bo- boundaries. If that's the case, it'd be a simple matter of just going to Somerset via the Feywild, popping out there, catch a travel time in half. Much more likely to survive that way. Allegedly, in theory. Uh, uh, as as just kind of a housekeeping note, would it be possible for everybody to change their names in uh, Roll20 to include your character name? I already did that. I know. You and Austin and me. Of us are not uh, following convention. Wait, should we have the character name? and we should, have, we should have a convention. Okay. I'll switch it to Kyle and, 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 and Austin's uh, convention. Oh. Uh, so you're doing character name first, and then yeah, I, I like I like character name first. I had changed it, but I will change it back now that we're doing the thing. <laughs> Very n- nicely yeah. done, Stephen. Nicely yeah, done. Well, uh, go to display name. It's in that gear. It's the top the yeah. top thing. <laughs> Steve, you would. <laughs> please, please change it to ball. Please change it to ball. That is a god. I honestly thought Steve was going to change his Steve name to Ball, so it just said Gaul, God, Ball. God, Ball. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking he was going to do, too. That's awesome. Thank you. That makes my tiny brain easier to, like, put character names to people's voices. All right. So this pendant is the thing that's protecting us from the darkness? Yes. Uh, how Do we know how it's doing that? Uh, you do know how it's doing it. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, what thing is it doing to counteract the darkness? Oh, that you have no idea. He did not share any details about how it works. How expensive does it look? It looks very expensive. It's it's a ruby, like a multifaceted ruby that glows a little bit, mm. set in a gold frame. Yeah, it's uh, it looks it looks quite valuable. You could Got definitely a of his love in each one to protect us. Right. Does it look magic? Then it looks. Magic. Oh yeah, it's definitely magic. If you if you ask him, he'll probably. Mander, so Manderbolt's a dick. If you and he's very condescending. So if you asked him like, oh, how like how does it work? He would probably just 
give you the most scornful, dripping, sarcastic answer, which basically basically boils down to I'd explain it to you, but I don't have any crayons on me. You know, so... <laughs> Good. Uh, all right. So, um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was going to ask something, but you don't have to answer it because I know that Sarah wouldn't know this. But uh, Manderbolt, that's the guy that was connected to. Um, yes. Uh, to Eris? Yes. Okay. Cool. Great. <laughs> okay, so why don't we. Uh, oh, something we need to do some important Roll housekeeping. Up trinkets. Well, we're going to do that, but first, everybody needs to roll HP. Yeah. Should I keep my HP? Yeah, or... you keep your HP, but you get to roll an additional... Uh, because you leveled up. Because you leveled up. Yeah. I did that uh, during the last game after everyone died, so... Right. Oh, it's... it's uh, so what, for, five, for, 5 D8. No, 4 D8, because you get max level for level 1. You get max uh, HP for level 1. So forty-eight plus your con modifier plus for your each roll. Forty-eight plus your con modifier. Plus your con, well, it's for plus me. your con modifier times level. So, yeah. Wizards, me. wizards get a D eight. Hmm. Oh yeah, not as good as the first time, but not nope. bad. Do wizards get a D eight? No, wizards get nope. D six. D six. Yeah, we do, baby. Yeah. Woo! Four sixes. Four sixes. Ooh, you can reroll the one. Grace, you get D twelve. Yeah, Grace gets oh, D twelves. And Jimmy, you get Jimmy, you get D tens, yeah. I think. That's good. Yeah. Okay. How did I get worse on you the D twelves? You got worse on your D twelves than you did on your D eights. Oh no, we were rolling ones. Eight. Yeah, you can re-roll ones on the on the hit die. If you roll the 13. if you roll the one, you can re-roll it. Going forward, this will not be the case, by the way. But for character creation, we're gonna we're gonna do it that way. Because oh, there, you, that's that's much better. Six, five, and a two. Oof, oof, cool. oof, cool, 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 cool. cool. So, yeah. and then max first level, you get max HP. So, and then On, somehow, wow, okay. And then you get your con modifier times your level added to all that. So, okay. yeah. Oh, hold on. <clears throat> right. So, Jim. Right, so, I have 32. Because. Yeah. What's 22 your... plus the D10. So, right. it's 32, right? Right. And then, what's your con modifier? My con modifier is 2. So, you get another 10 hit points. So, 42. Okay. 42 HP. Cool. Not Thank bad. You. Yeah, you really I have a lot. I have a little. Is 28 a lot? It can't, I mean, it depends on context. <laughs> it's something. Hit points, no. I I have dead one. bodies, yes. <laughs> Hold on. Do I have 44? No, that can't be right. 8, 32, plus 10. 42, not 44. There Listen, you Kyle, you have as many as uh, Sarath had last time. So you're doing great. It's all, right. all you, hey, you, it's all you need to survive. And Sarath survived. Survive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 30, 30. And then uh, once everybody has their HP finalized and input, we will roll for trinkets, which is my favorite part of character grace. creation. Yeah. No, what, what's the calculation? <laughs> you should have, let me look, I think you have 43 hit points. 22 plus 12 for first level is 34 plus 10. No, you have 44. 44 HP. Okay. Good enough for me. Okay. Um, um, damn. That was a good roll for for Bardy McBard. 24 plus. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's real good. Yeah, 42. I'm, I'm a tanky little bird. Yep, that's, that's good <laughs> HP for a bird. Okay, so... Uh, we're going to roll for trinkets. We're going to start with Bob. We're only a D100. All right. Here's a D100 coming at you. 74. 74. You get a fan that, when unfolded, shows a sleeping cat. Aww. Got like a Pusheen fan. <laughs> yeah. One That's very party. Shows a sleeping cat. Okay. <laughs> Is it a calico cat? 
It's it whatever. is a Palico cat. <laughs> oh. All right, uh, Casey, roll me a D hundred. Twenty-three. Oh, this is a mysterious one. A brass orb etched with strange runes. It's the Feywild key. All right, Grace, roll me a D hundred. Seventy-seven. A sheet of paper upon which is drawn a complex mechanical contraption. <laughs> You've got a patent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim, roll me a D hundred. Do you know how to do that? Yeah. Okay. Of course I do. Of course he does. <laughs> oh no, we. Uh, you can't have this one. Roll again. What? Sarah already has it. Oh, that's small. Wait, world. read what it is, though. It's a uh, a bit of folded cloth that, when unfolded, it turns into a stylish cap. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Kind of uh, this one is, you have a one-inch cube, each side of which is painted a different color. That's uh, the best Rubik's cube. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's say you have like you have like one uh, uh, Candyland die. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kyle, roll me a D hundred. Uh, oh, oh, okay. You have an alabaster mask. Yeah, I do. That makes sense. Got it. From uh, <laughs> can I can I ask you about something, Steve, with mine? I'm imagining that all of my magic items that I now suddenly have came from Bledna. Like, the, me and Kyle talked about it, like maybe she grabbed some stuff before we left the library. Okay. Can my Hat of Disguise item that I have be like an enchantment that she put on my cloth that folds into a hat? Sure. I like that. Cool. That's flavorful. Very, very cool. Okay. So we're going to go down. You guys are uh, organizing uh, for your your trip out. You're told, uh, Manderbolt introduces you, to those of you who haven't met him, uh, he introduces you to Mr. Temple. It's a charming, well-dressed, dragonborn gentleman and Manderbolt's personal assistant. He's a very popular man in Torrey. He's a, on a first-name basis with half the city and is passingly familiar with the other half. People often wonder why such a pleasant man works for Manderbolt, and speculation on this topic is a common point of gossip. Uh, yeah, he is a uh, he is very very handsome for a dragonborn gentleman. Uh, br brilliant blue scales. He always he's always wearing like a like a very nice like fur coat, and he always has a, a cane. He has several rings on his fingers. Uh, he's always extremely pleasant. Uh, it's it's common knowledge that he's a sorcerer of some stripe, but uh, his background is generally a mystery. Nobody uh, nobody's been able to dig up much about him. Uh, anyway, now that you're all gathered in the same place, we're going to introduce our characters. We're going to start with uh, I'll, I'll I'll list tell you who's going to be talking first, your name, your class, uh, anything interesting about your character, like a physical description or anything, and then why don't we talk about, why don't you also say what magic items you picked so that the group in general knows uh, kind of what everybody's rocking. And we'll start with Bob. Okay. Uh, yeah, so um, Magpie Calling. Um, I think Steve said that people around town call him Marv. Um, he is like a five foot tall uh, Kenku. Um, as far as the magic items that he's rocking, he has um, a kind of kooky looking helmet that when he looks at you for a long time, you feel like he might be probing your thoughts a little bit. Um, it's a helm of telepathy. So um, I may at times ask you, like, what's your character thinking? Um, because he may, in fact, parrot it out loud at some point in the future. <laughs> That's so um, cool. And yeah, I had to turn off my min maxer for fun. So I'm, and then the other one, which really compensates for that pretty fucking well, is the instrument of the bard. So he's got this really, really nice, um, what did I, the Folkluken Bandor, I believe is the one that I landed on. 
What what the hell is a Falklucan Bandor? The Falklucan Bandor is um, a Bandor, which is it kind of looks like it's a, a, an instrument that's similar to a lute. If you want to Google, I can show you a picture of a Bandor. They're pretty yeah, cool. Put it looking. in the chat, bro. All right. So this is a Bandor. Oh, okay. Let's see it. A Falklucan Bandor. Got it. A yeah. large, long necked, plucked string instrument. They can be regarded as a bass kittern. So it does not have the entry tuning table. Oh my god, who wrote this? Oh, it's Ed. Okay. There you go. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Oh, that seems very. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was in the Disney Robin Hood movie. Yes, but it definitely I was. I believe it was, yes. I like it. Popularized so, in the 16th century. I think it was played yeah. by a stork. Yeah, so it's appropriate. I'm keeping it on brand. I, I should have picked that movie instead, um, but I didn't. <laughs> So yeah. I mean that movie only really has like four songs. Yeah, but they're all bangers. So that's <laughs> so good. <laughs> it's how everyone became a furry. Yeah, Awkward know. silence. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's how you became a furry, Kyle. I yeah. wish. Austin was I'm a furry. Enough. Age is while back. I became a furry the normal way, okay? Space By watching My Mogwai? Little Pony. Oh, okay. it, wasn't, it wasn't Mogwai, okay. I thought it was Space Jam. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I uh, Mulligan, it was definitely Space Jam. Absolutely Space Jam. <laughs> That's so much cooler than My Little Pony. Um, but yeah, and um, yeah, that's what he's rocking. He does a lot of, a lot of stuff pretty well, because he's a bard. Okay. I see that we lost Casey and Jim. They were turned off by the uh, the furry conversation. Yeah. Or they, they had, went to go they, get their they costumes. To, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all furries here? Or they just like sprinted <laughs> off and they're going to come back wearing fucking raccoon heads? Finally, my time. Like, While we're waiting for them to be someone back. say My Little Pony? One quick question while we're waiting for the movie back. I used to be able to to move around people's names at the bottom of the screen in Roll20, and I don't seem to be able to do that anymore. Does anyone have any ideas as to why? Did you minimize their name to just names? Yeah. Yeah, if you minimize them to just names, you can't move their names around anymore. I used to be able to slide all the names on top of one another. Huh. Maybe make them pictures again, slide them on top of each other, then make them names. No, there's something there's something weird going on. I don't have to. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Anyway, yeah, that's Magpie. Very good. Uh, we're missing half the group now. So... So we will wait for them to get back. Shame. 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 Boo! Does anybody have any questions for me while we're waiting? How you doing? I'm doing all what? right. How did you become a furry? I'm not a furry. That's the thing. No. But if it, it it would probably would have been Robin Hood. I mean, definitely, yeah. right? Like Maid Marian. Maid Marian, mm -hmm. come on, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, even Robin Hood. Okay, that might be saying I might be showing too much now. Kyle, oh, come on, you're fine. Kyle, we're on I the don't, internet. I don't disagree with you, Kyle. You're right. No, man, we're on the internet. Little, you can't show too much. Little John, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I uh, really you pick any Disney movie from that period of time, you know. So yeah, they perfect. really went hard into animals for a while. Uh, phrasing? <laughs> <laughs> it's because they could recycle the animation. Yeah, yeah that's right. And they definitely yeah. did. Yeah, if you watch the uh, was it the Aristocats? Like oh um, yeah, ninety percent. Actually, was it? I think it's Robin Hood. Like Robin Hood is ninety percent recycled animation. They stole yeah. from the Jungle yeah, Book, mainly uh, Aristocats. Jungle Book. They stole like everything. Uh, they stole from they stole from Sword in the Stone. 
I studied this a lot. I had a lot. I had two kids. I watched a lot of Disney movies for a period. Winnie the Pooh did as well. Winnie the Pooh also did. A lot of animation back then. I mean, because it took so much yeah. effort to animate anything that it was so much easier just to take the, what are they called? The cell sheets or whatever. Yeah. And just re, re. Yeah, they had all put the. Put a new skin on them or whatever. Yeah, they had all the keyframes plotted out. It was oh, fucking, let's yeah. go. Yeah. So Disney's had to do that a couple times because I remember right after their like golden age they had a bunch of movies come out that were like half and half yeah half animation half not it was just like we don't have the staff around to animate a whole movie right now the uh my favorite robin hood movie is still really good yeah it's oh it is my favorite like weird disney thing is in sword in the stone they have three different voice actors for wart Like and you can tell like like that that guy's yeah. that, like that guy's thirty whoever voiced that that <laughs> line and then this kid's voice is breaking and this kid's six like I don't it's all over the place. It's been a long time since I've seen Sword in the Stone. I mean, it's been a long time since I've seen any of those older ones, but I love Sword in the Stone. Yeah, that was one of my favorites. Yeah, that's a classic for sure. All right, I don't know where Jim is. Uh, Casey, why don't you give us your character rundown? Yeah, um, Captain Nikolai Castera. He's a, a ladron and comes from the Feywild originally. And uh, for reasons that he doesn't like to talk about, uh, he has self exiled himself. Um, he does consider himself a uh, military officer of. Sometimes some renown and sometimes not. Um, but uh, he basically has been playing the mercenary life since self exaltation. And uh, he is um, a, an addict of drink and gambling. Um, he, his magic weapons, I just picked up a magic uh, weapon and. The gloves of missile snaring. Those are fun. Those two things. Mm-hmm. Now I don't. Yeah. Rem- I don't remember if the gloves of missile snaring. If like a giant throws a boulder at you, can you grab that? Mm, it's weird. It's weird. The, I I read this when he posted that. This was an item I was thinking about. You, if you can reduce yeah, the damage that the boulder does, which is a really fucking fucking lucky roll. Yeah. Then you can then, throw it back. I but well, you can you can catch it, but you you don't get the monk's throw it back ability. Okay, you can no, just that's a monk thing. But you can but you can deflect it entirely. All right, so you can knock it out of the way if you yeah. reduce it to zero. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't I pretty, didn't know if the missile pretty... snare one gave you the monk thing where you can chuck that no. back. Okay. I imagine if it is a giant boulder that he rolls really terribly, it'd be like glancing off to the side, and I rolled max, and I just kind of like set it down on the ground. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which would be pretty epic. It's like the... Uh, uh, all right. It's not really catching. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> I caught it. Everybody saw. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, Grace. My character is Kiwi. The pleasant, adorable, wonderful little lizard folk child. Um, what else do you need to know about Kiwi? Uh, she's barbarian. She, um, when she rages, she doesn't usually remember what happened. There seems to be some kind of interesting little fugue state that happens, and devastation happens in her wake, and she doesn't remember it. Um, her magical items are some cool winged boots that Papa Jasper gave her to start working on her discomfort with heights and a cool little bag of tricks that has a little furry object in it that she can throw to bring out a cute little animal friend to keep her company which uh, which bag of tricks is it because um, I think there's three different three, types um, there's like yeah three different ones yeah cool. bag of tricks is a lot of them. I didn't there are huh. colors. Yeah, there's they yeah, have different animals. I had no it. idea. Oh yeah. It is a 
Oh, I see. Gray, gray bag of tricks. A gray bag of tricks. That's like the the kind of the friendlier one. Yeah, it's cute. Kind of. Are the other ones are the other ones not friendly? No, none of them are friendly. <laughs> oh, they're all they're all uh, they're all pretty wild. Doesn't one of them pull out like a sturge? I think so. Like a mosquito bat? Yeah. yeah. Some of them are scary. <laughs> I don't think anybody can pull out a sturge. What if I could pull out an axe beak? Uh, That's still pretty cool. Axe they all have things. they all have pretty Dire damn wolves. good D eight. <laughs> Direwolves, panthers, now, giant badgers. To clarify the rule, because this has come up in the past, they do what? these animals do disappear. <laughs> they they had to errata that because apparently people were abusing it. If you can't tell, I'm staring at you, Kyle. <laughs> no, I did not abuse this. This is not my fault. Actually, Kyle did not abuse it. it was, he just used it for comedic effect for the most part. What he did abuse... <laughs> Let's see if sanity. Yes. D look, just because I could summon 16 baboons doesn't mean I should have. <laughs> but you absolutely but I did. Would, and I would do it again. I know you would. <laughs> That's why you're not allowed to play Druid anymore. <laughs> oh, that was never told to me outright. Well, directly. I can play a, a conjurer, make Blenda a conjurer. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Missed We're opportunities. Missed opportunities. <laughs> All right, Jim, let's talk about your character. Okay. Um, so, yeah, my guy, he is a. Uh, moral the scornful. <laughs> um. <laughs> And he is a orc of Eberron paladin, um, who essentially is uh, on an oath of redemption to redeem himself because he used to just uh, kill anyone who's weak in his way. Um, and then he, you know, made a promise to his wife. Um, anyways, so now he will protect the weak, but only if he asks them, and he does not like it. Um, <laughs> like the the most the most lackluster redemption paladin. Yeah, I guess I guess I'm on a redemption path. Yeah, <laughs> pretty Fuck much bullshit. <laughs> but you What's can't hold against me. What is it? Yeah, how did you do that? It's called a this one's called clownfish. There's a few mm. of them. But, cool. Um, it's just a pitch change, really. Mm. So yeah. Um. Yeah, so as long as they ask me, I will help them. Um, there's more to that, but I will move on to the magic items. Um, my first one is a brooch of shielding. Uh, while wearing, I have resistance to force damage and immunity to the magic missile spell. And my other is the great axe of warning. Uh, this magic weapon warns you of danger. Um, while it's on your person, you have the advantage on initiative rolls. In addition, you and any of your companions within 30 feet of you cannot be surprised, except when inca incapacitated by something other than non-magical sleep. Uh, the weapon magically awakens you and your companions within range if you are sleeping naturally when combat begins. That's awesome. Get, that's good one. I'm not going to lie, it's really an axe of warning. I thought it was an axe. I was just like, I'm going to hit you! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's that too. <laughs> in in uh, Gilbert Gottfried's voice. Yeah. Yes. If somebody wants to do a Gilbert Gottfried voice every time Jim swings. You're welcome to, but I do not. not well, it's not going to be me. Kurt did say he wanted to pop in and just just play NPCs. So there you go. There we go. I can, I can work with job. I can make that happen. <laughs> Good. All right. Everybody, get away from the orc paladin. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? <laughs> that's right. gonna hurt your voice I yeah, know that's why I'm not doing it <laughs> <laughs> alright Kyle oh I think most people remember Bledna the aunt of Jorug uh, she is a little gnome a little uh, rock wait hold on now I forgot what kind of gnome she is uh, she's a rock gnome she is a wizard um uh, she dabbles in the dark arts, but she does not allow herself to go full dark. Oh, she but reads she that will, book. But she, she, there's not a book she wouldn't read. <laughs> um, 
her kind of uh, moral code for uh, wizardry is a lot like the ancient one from Doctor Strange. In that she will use the dark arts and the necromancy and stuff like that, uh, but she's not going to like go full in. She's probably not going to raise the dead, but a vampiric touch, that seems fine. Um... Oh, her magical items is she has a broom of flying. Uh, you might recognize her as being a star Quidditch player from about 100 years ago. Uh, and she also has a deck of illusions. I imagine Blenda being a beater. I don't just because the thought mm. of a little gnome lady on a broom beating the crap out of people with a stick is hilarious to me. <laughs> yeah, and I, to, I, if I'm perfectly honest, that is what I have told you is the extent of all of my Quidditch knowledge. So, just know it's a really dumb game. <laughs> <laughs> the rules are perfect and make absolute sense. It seems like it would be a really fun game if there wasn't one ball that gave you a million billion points. So, see, I think it'd be super fun. Because I don't care about points or winning or games, really. So, you know, the flying part's cool. Flying part is cool. <laughs> All right. That's Bledna. All right, then we get to Sarith. Uh, yeah. Sarith is a guy who showed up to this town out of the uh, darkness smelling terrible. Smelling really, really, really bad. Probably mainly because of this really ugly, dirty, metal, cast iron pot turned helmet that he was wearing. Um, uh, thankfully, that was able to be taken off. I'm, through, I'm sure through many uh, uh, painful, harrowing uh, uh, spells and uh, yeah, it took like one minute. rituals. Great. <laughs> well, that's really upsetting because I wore that thing for a year. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I, I got my cursed helmet removed. Um, I and... told you I could have gotten that off. You just had to eat some soup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, I'm not trying that again, Bladen. I saw the extent of that. Uh, if I think that Zareth, if he's looking for a, a way to change what he looks like, it's a lot more of the non-permanent style, which is why he's probably happy that this helmet is off so he can wear his hat of disguise that he has, that Bledna enchanted for him. Um, and then uh, Zareth, when he showed up to town, looked really bad. A lot of, I think, like electrical scarring across his face and chest. Um, that he doesn't like to talk about, but all of a sudden, uh, as soon as that helmet's off, he looks fine again. Um, and he's wearing that hat of disguise a lot, so. Um, uh, Sarath is a drow, um, so being in the sunlight hurts like hell, but he, at this point, prefers it to being in the darkness. Um... And Sarath also probably doesn't talk as much as he used to. Um, uh, he's a warlock. Doesn't love to talk about his demon, either. Um, or, or talk to it. And uh, his other magic item is the, the Rod of the Pact Keeper. So, plus one spell slot a day, plus one uh, to all of his spell attacks. Yeah. Pretty cool. Okay, so you all get to know each other uh, basically the night before you're supposed to leave, Jasper Vanderbilt holds a, a dinner uh, in his at his at his house. He has a house not far from campus. Uh, very uh, very wealthy neighborhood. The food is excellent. Everything's uh, you know, everything's perfect. You guys get to know one another. Nobody gets into a fight that night uh, unless you want to. Uh, and you're told you leave first thing in the morning. Is there anything the characters want to do before they leave for their adventure? Is there anything unfinished business they need to take care of? Is there any items you need to pick up? Um, 
And he um, I would ask off. everybody after dinner if they want to go celebrate. You know, parade around the town and, you know. <laughs> like a party? You got to start your, you know, well, you know, a celebration. Magpie just looks up at you. Ready and charged, sir. <laughs> Uh, what exactly do you see us having to celebrate here? Well, it's a bit of a, you know, get together and icebreaker sort of thing, you know. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I might come, uh, I might not celebrate with all of you, but I'll, I'll be around. Great, I know just the place. Just follow me. <clears throat> All right, it's just, it's just this one. Just... All right, so we're gonna we're gonna shorten this. We're just gonna say that anybody who went with the good captain, including the good captain, cheers. Uh, if you could all make me cheers a Constitution saving throw, DC thirteen. Uh, does Bledna go? Uh, yeah, she does. All right, then I'll go. We're going out drinking. Does Kiwi get served? Uh, no, Kiwi... I mean, only if Kiwi insists on getting served. As long as Kiwi gets to consume something, she's probably not going to complain. Okay, then it's up to you. I mean, but she doesn't have... She certainly doesn't have to. Everybody else does. But Is anyone in the party going to be trying... Going to be s suggesting or handing alcoholic beverages to kiwi is the question because yeah. she will drink whatever you give her yeah absolutely i don't we're, think i'm gonna, gonna know each other i'm handing you beverages i'm not gonna hand you any beverages but i'm probably gonna be like if right if you want to... service we will go to another place <laughs> i like that uh, thus far casey is the only one who has failed this role yeah mm -hmm. uh uh kiwi if you would like to partake i will not be so i can watch you I can watch everybody. I'll make sure nothing bad happens to you. Nothing all bad will happen to us. We're in the city. Yeah. Listen, the last time I was in a city, mate. <laughs> uh, Moral, you need to make a constitution saving throw. And I do that how? Uh, uh, on your character, on your character sheet. sheet. Upper left, click the constitu uh, con save. Mm -hmm. A young so, kiwi can hold her liquor, apparently. I mean, uh, not, not shocked. Yeah, How young takes a big is swig. kiwi? Oh well, yeah, I guess that's worth that's worth mentioning. It's actually is worth. That because um, lizard folk don't age at the same rate as many <laughs> others. So for you, she's she's child. Looks at age. She does to me. have a number, but she's not going to tell you. Great. Bledna! I don't think Sarah's that. Come on, join us. Yeah. If, if I'd already been drinking, lad, I think you need to be catching up with me. <laughs> I am catching up. That's where we're going. I think you are also, they're kind of weird in that with their age thing. All right. You're so... in young adulthood, though. Right? Yeah. Mm hmm. So. Ironically, the only person who has a rough night <laughs> is the good captain who drinks. Yeah. Like, everybody is astonished at the sheer volume that this skinny Aladrin boy. Money to blow. <laughs> 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 I imagine that, yeah, I imagine that, yeah, you start moving on to like back rooms and coming out, like, kind of like, <laughs> all right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I'm just looking around like, wait, these guys, the one that's in charge? Yeah, ostensibly. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, you, uh, the next morning, everybody's there. You're all scheduled to meet at the Manderbolt estate, uh, you know, at 6 a.m. sharp. And you guys don't, the captain doesn't roll in till like eight o'clock. <laughs> I don't know if you would roll in. Oh no. Okay. So like eight o'clock rolls around and Manderbolt is like getting like 
visibly angry and he like looks at Mr. Temple and Mr. Temple kind of I will see what I can do and he wanders off and he finds yeah. where, where where do you think you where do you think you eventually passed out um he's probably uh in a common room of some terrible establishment Okay, so the rusty cutlass. The rusty is, cutlass, classic. <laughs> Dockside dive. Yeah. All right. Would well, I have seen that? Would you what? Would I have seen like Wary? Probably, probably not. It's it's on. At some point, you guys kind of lost track of him because he was like, "Come on, we can keep going." Everybody else is like, "No, we can't," because alcohol poisoning but or i you know i could have if everyone was like calling it a night at some point i would be like okay i'm going home too and then i don't go home <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh you're you're passed out on the the splintered soggy wooden flooring yeah. of the rusty cutlass when yeah. you feel poke 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 something's poking you in the temple poke 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 what 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 and you crack a bleary eye open and you see mr temple standing above you with his cane that's why they call him mr temple <laughs> that's where he pokes you it is well past the appointed hour for you to show up we are working on a schedule i do i know you wait i do recognize you we, uh, do we have a drink? I, I'm afraid we have not had the privilege. But you well, have an assignment. So if you would please put your pants on and come with me. <laughs> yeah. Be right there. <laughs> uh, he would eventually get up, uh, finds his hat before he finds his pants. And then, uh, right as rain, he just he starts walking along, following uh, Mr. Temple. All right. Uh, Captain Castera currently has one level of exhaustion. That's fair. I am pretending that I am fine. Yeah, and you're <laughs> pretending very well. You're a professional alcoholic. You're like, it's just, yeah. another, just another day. Yeah. All right, it's so like 9 o'clock. Uh, a carriage rolls up with a, a driver in a carriage rolls up and uh, Mr. Temple steps out at the Mandible Estate. Yeah. And uh, it's like, if you, ladies and gentlemen, if you will please come with me, as the carriage will take us to the Ashen Gate. I, uh, I probably roll out extravagantly and apologize, my dear friends. Sometimes the drink gets the better of you. What can you say? We can. We see. all been there before, right? I'm pat, probably pat moral on the on the shoulder as I walk in. <laughs> I think reserved for the week. <laughs> it's it's crazy, mate, because I feel like we all went to bed at about the same time, and everyone seemed fine. Aye, aye. Well, onwards and upwards. That's what I always say. <laughs> All right, so Mr. Temple kind of ushers you all into the carriage, and you guys uh, throw, throw stuff at a desk. Uh, you all uh, are whisked out of the city of Torre. The city of Torre is a beautiful city. It is an extremely wealthy merchant city, uh, known uh, the world over, according to it and its people. But for its uh, magnificent towers that adorn the city. Uh, people who have been here for a long time know that there, yes, there are a lot of magnificent towers in the city. Some of the towers are literally just built to be tall. They have no functional thing. It's just, it's just like a rich guy decided that he wanted a tall tower too and just built a tower. But it's... Steve, qu question for you. Yes. 
Could you give me an in-depth history of each tower and its construction? <laughs> Actually, uh, can we just divert over to the towers and do some adventuring there first before we go okay. off on it? Hold on, I can't Sorry. do that. <laughs> Steve, Steve, I have a serious question. Uh, hold on, I have to answer Bob's question first really <laughs> quick. Just gotta, just gotta do this really quick. Oh, it's not gonna let me do it, is it? Well, that's dumb here. Well, we're just going to do this. and we're gonna... What didn't it let you do? Uh... <laughs> I'm answering your question. Uh, you take 94 fire damage. All right. <laughs> well, that was fast. <laughs> A red dragon? Yeah, why not? All right. <laughs> How many dragons? Let's start on my new character. Uh, Austin, oh, you had a question? Man. Yeah, are there seven of these towers? Or. <laughs> <laughs> you take 92 points of fire damage. <laughs> well, Sarah so survived one dragon. To be Party, wait, by How tall is the tallest? God tower, damn, you make it do this? I just. <laughs> well, see you oh, next okay. week for session zero. <laughs> session zero. Yeah, session zero next week, guys. That's New campaign incredible. called "Fuck You Guys." <laughs> <laughs> it's just one room and eight terrasses. Keep doing this until we run the tower campaign. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So, the carriage whisks you away from the city. And takes you a couple of hours west uh, through uh, several miles of idyllic farmland till eventually comes to a little a little valley, like a little canyon valley through a sparse wood. And we're like, hair dog, anybody? Hair the dog? Just me? Eventually okay. leads you here. Uh, the path lead. There's a road. Eventually, the the carriage stops, and Mister Temple leads you about a mile, mile and a half down a dirt dirt path to through this little canyon to an enormous dead tree. The path leads directly up to the tree and just stops there. Uh, yeah, this this tree is just it beggars belief how large it is. Very, the, it's bark. It doesn't have any bark. It's just like smooth, and it's long, spindly branches, completely devoid of any sort of life. Mister Temple stops in front of it and says, "Welcome to the Ashen Gate." Right, Temple, tell me if I'm seeing things, but I think that there's a tree in the way of our path. The tree is the path. Yep. Ah, uh, there's some weird yep. fairy shit, huh? Definitely weird fairy shit. Is that the same thing? I don't hear it, it's just me. It is just you. You are extremely hungover. What can I say? Yeah, the sunlight, sunlight hurts, right? A little bit. A little bit. You should probably be be uh, used to that, though, right? That's really what dark light sensitivity or sunlight sensitivity is. It's just a hangover, a perpetual. It's hangover. just a constant hangover. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Drow are just drunk all the time. Hungover. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um. I don't appreciate. Well, listen. After living a year in uh, my entire life in the underdark, and then a year in darkness, no, I'm not used to that at all. It's fucking burns. All right, uh, Mr. Temple says, uh, it will take me a few minutes to get the gate open. Uh, if you will please excuse me. Uh, once I do so, I suggest that you uh, scurry on through and uh, make your way wherever Captain Castera uh, instructs you, as he is the expert in these matters. I sit on this rock. All right. <laughs> head down. And Mr. Temple, he pulls out like a, a mithril key from around his neck. And he's just about to start doing some magic shit. 
when a bunch of folks show up. Uh oh's. Whoa, whoa. Led by. So a bunch of armed men and women Oof. rush up. Uh, and people who are from Torre might recognize this gentleman. Uh, Kiwi, you definitely know who this guy is. He is bad news. Eduardo Silvertooth. Uh, he is a known crony of the sorceress Ida, Ida de Torre, who is considers herself to be a rival of your papa. Uh, papa Manderbolt has less flattering ways of describing her. Uh, jumped a bitch, I think is the word he uses the most often. Uh, but uh, Eduardo is also a sorcerer. Basically, he is the uh, Mr. Temple to Ida de Torre. And he rolls up with a bunch of folks. He says, oh, M Mr. Temple, are, are, you, are you and your friends going somewhere? And Mr. Temple goes, <sighs> and turns around and says, Eduardo, how unpleasant to see you. Yeah. And Aurora says, well, I, I, I assume that y'all stand around this large tree. We're not planning on opening a gate to the Feywild now, because that's illegal. Now, you know that, Mr. Temple. My friends here are, you know, strict, strict students of the law. We can't have you going around breaking dimensional barriers. Now, what will the neighbors say? Mr. Temple is... <laughs> He looks to the captain. He's like, Captain, if you would be so kind as to take care of our guests while it opens the gate, uh, I suggest once it opens the gate, you make your way through it as quickly as possible. Uh, can I look to this guy and say, well, I'm sorry, we haven't been introduced. Who, who the hell are you? Oh, my name is Eduardo, and I'm a... Uh... I'm the, the proud employee of Adeditore, the foremost arcane expert in the region. And a concerned citizen. No, I, I'm sorry, just because it seems like you're, uh, you're trying to say that we're not able to go through this, this, uh, this tree. Is there, is there a rule against that? I'm sorry. Uh, I just realized you're you're rather you're rather chatty for a dark elf. Uh, is that is your mama around? I can talk to. Yeah. Maybe a strong... can I make a perception? Can I make a perception check on this guy? For, for sure. For what? Uh, for who the fuck he thinks he's talking to? Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna heck play Not a perception on. check. <laughs> well, that'd be an insight check, first of all. Okay, uh, great. Uh, not uh, good. Not good. You're just like flabbergasted. You're like, what? how? How <laughs> dare he? I, I uh, pull on hex Laker. Okay, right, I think it's time to roll for an <laughs> Let me uh, pull up the... Damn, I was going to do a thing. Oh, all right. Um, initiative, huh? Here we go. Click on your character first before Click you... on your character first, or it won't populate. Yes, I always forget that. Thank you for the reminder, Casey. So, Jim, click on your icon on the map. Oh. Uh... Okay. And then in I'll the top right, right I think, should pop up this as initiative. Uh, yep. And then you actually get to roll it twice because you have your great axe of warning. And you take the higher number. 17 it is. <laughs> and we can Damn. just change that. Oh, it's Tom. Okay. So, initiative. Top of the initiative is Kiwi. 
uh, a bunch of people, everybody just drew swords. I can't hear you, Grace. I'm sorry. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can. Okay. Kiwi. Already doesn't like this guy, so I guess let's just bite him. Bite him on the shoulder. What else are you going to do? Well, he's pretty far away. He's oh, over. Where is he? I he's... need to actually look at the map. <laughs> yeah, probably a good idea. Oh, yeah. He's 15 feet further away than you can get. Well, then I'm not even going to go up to him. I got friends to look out for me. Who are these weirdos? These are like, <clears throat> they just, they kind of, they look like uh, mercenaries, basically, just like hired thugs. They have an assortment of different weapons, but they're all, there's no uniform or anything. I mean, according to their little tokens, they all look like they're uh, rejected musicians from a Christian rock band. Yeah, like I said, mercenaries. <laughs> okay. <laughs> look, these Christian rockers need, you know, to pay rent, so. Okay. Well, realistically, Kiwi is not going to throw the first punch. So, I'm going to move. Over to these rocks. Okay. And I'm going to... I don't know. Hang out there. Okay, you hang out there. Magpie. Okay. Well, I think uh, I also don't want to throw the first punch, so I'm just going to use an action to cast Detect Thoughts using this helmet on um, on the lead the lead fellow. Okay. How does that work? Um, it is. Do 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 do. Where is the character sheet? <clears throat> it works like. Like this. Okay. Wow. That's so, a, lot of a lot of text. The short, the shorthand is, um, I know what his surface thoughts are, and um, as an action, I can probe deeper. But right now, it just gives me his surface thoughts and the ability to speak with him, um, telepathically, and he can use a bonus action to respond. Okay. So it's an you're taking your action to read surface thoughts. Okay. Uh, his th surface thoughts are, I finally get to kill this stupid goddamn dragon, and then maybe my mistress will finally recognize me for the talent I am. So as a bonus action, I will say in his voice, mm, I finally get to kill this dragon bone, and maybe this mi my mistress will recognize me for the good servant I am. <laughs> <He's> like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> And then I use a bonus action to give. Um... You already used a bonus action. Oh, that's right. Yeah, never mind. That's that's my that's my turn. Okay. Uh, this guy gets to go. Let me just double check his abilities. Okay. Uh, he's just gonna move in front of Eduardo. This guy, it looks like a professional. This guy here. This guy right here. Okay. Uh, he's he he has a, a great sword. He pulls out the great sword and plants himself in front of Eduardo. You know, bodyguard style. Should have cursed that guy. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Speaking of Eduardo, it's Eduardo's turn. Oh, I forgot to roll. Finish for some other people. Just this one. Just uh Oh, he goes at the end anyway. Looks like no, he doesn't. Hold on. There he goes. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh <laughs> Do 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 do. 
Do, do, do. Boom, boom, boom. Elmo's World! <laughs> he casts a fireball. Oh, no. It's a sensible move. Yeah. Does anyone have a counter spell? So hit the guy in front of him? <laughs> nope. Why is this way? I'm taking that as a no. <laughs> uh, I think the only person who would have it is Kyle. I do not have counter spell. Okay. Uh, one second. All right, that's a 20 foot radius sphere. So. Basically, it's going to hit. Oh, the tree! Oh, yeah. God, the tree. Everybody but Kiwi, everybody but Kiwi is going to need to make me a DC 14 dexterity save. Okay. All right. Walk to a solid start. Okay, uh, it looks like everybody but Sarith made the saving throw. If you made the saving throw, you take 12 points of damage. If you did not make the saving throw, no. you take 24 points of damage. I'm so hurt. <laughs> okay. Uh, now it's the guard's turn. All right, Moral, this guy runs up to you like a big dumb dummy. Yeah. He's going Finally to... Finally, some action. <laughs> He's going to attack. He misses. Big ol' whiff. Uh, Kiwi, this guy's running up to you. And misses because... Wow, that's really bad. Uh... This guy's running up to Sarith. Uh, 14 hit Sarith. Uh, mm. Oh, I didn't cast Mage Armor. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you I'll take hit. five piercing. And then that... this last guy is also going to rub to Moral and continue to make bad life choices. 21 will Successfully. hit for 5 piercing. Okay. And it is Moral's turn. So, Jim, in a round of combat in D&D, &D, you have three actions you can take. You, you get three actions. You get an action, a move action, and a bonus action. You can take one okay. of each. You can, or you can take, you know, any combination thereof. Uh, in any order... Uh, yeah, an, an attack is a an action. I believe at fifth level is Paladin. You can take two attacks for one action. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So that is correct. That's fun. Oh, with a great axe, can I kind of like cleave everyone around me? Or uh, you, cleave is actually a feat that you. Oh, we didn't talk about feats. I think you should actually probably have a feat, but we'll talk about that later. We don't have the time to go into it right now. But yeah. Uh, 